السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله أحمده وأستعينه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبي الرحمة والهدى محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household, we ask Allah to bless them all and to bless every single one of us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us. My brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful day of the month of Ramadan. And we are drawing to the end of this beautiful month. If I'm not mistaken, this is the second last Friday of this beautiful month of Ramadan. And the time has flown by so quickly that it leaves us from amongst those who confirm the prophecy of Muhammad sallallahu wherein he says there will come a time when time itself will be crumpled. Crumpled meaning it will move very quick such that a year will move as though it was just a month. And the month will be as though it was a week. And the week will move as though it was just a day. And I'm very certain that it is true for every one of us that it seems like Ramadan just started the other day. And already we are almost through. Before you know it, it's going to be over. And just like that, before you know it, half your life is over. And before you know it, your entire life is over. So let's not waste time. Let's not be from those who dilly-dally. Let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were all met with some very sad news late last night and early this morning. And this sad news has struck us and hit us in such a strong way that it is important for us to give some guidelines as to how to look at this. Because as much as we know what has just happened and so many lives have just been lost and we are praying for this beautiful country Malaysia and we have seen so much of goodness I have been here for a while and I have seen the love in the hearts of the people and in their eyes and the beautiful faces and then we come to see news of this nature and some people begin to say that this is the punishment of Allah that is not correct we cannot determine that this is the punishment of Allah. What makes us say that? Is it because we consider it a calamity or something that was a tragedy? If tragedies and calamities depicted solely and only the punishment of Allah, then those who were punished the most would have been the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam or himself na'udhu billah may allah protect us that is a dangerous blasphemous statement because if we look at problems and difficulties and ask ourselves who went through the most problems and difficulties we would unanimously agree as muslims that according to our books of history muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam went through the most difficulty ever ever so let us never be irresponsible in our statements. May Allah protect us all. And let us understand that Allah tests us in many ways. This is the month of Ramadan. People are asking forgiveness of Allah from day one. People are turning to Allah. There is more salah, more prayer. There is more in terms of fasting, more in terms of recitation of Quran. People have been generous. I have seen Malaysians and others with my own eyes. How they reach out to people in the month of Ramadan is unique. The atmosphere that I have tasted in this beautiful country in this month has been something that is a learning experience for me. You know, the hearts even of those who are normally hard hearted, they are softened in Ramadan. So how can we say that Allah is punishing? Stop Allah. May Allah protect us. But rather it's a test from Allah. Life and death is in the hands of Allah. Even if I'm healthy, I have to go. Does that mean I was punished last minute? No. Even if I'm healthy, I have to go. At some stage, 
And that is a prescription, meaning it is something predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's take a look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusuli. The best of creation, the most honored of all the prophets of Allah, the highest of the lot. When he was born, we know his father had already passed away. Was that a punishment? Astaghfirullah. No way, not at all. In fact, it was the choice of Allah to give us and from amongst us, those who are orphaned hope to say that that does not spell doom for you. It does not mean that your life is going to be a mess. Here is the most favorite of our entire creation. And he did not have a father when he was born. His father had already passed away. After a few years, his mother passed away. Was that a punishment? Not at all. Innocent child. This is a test for those around him as well as for him as well as for those distant to learn later. May Allah grant us goodness. After that, his mother passed away. Then his grandfather looked after him for two years and he also passed away. Now who is left? Distant relative known as an uncle. An uncle is not such a close relation, meaning not as close as a mother or a father. The uncle. So the uncle starts looking after Muhammad and he grew up and Allah made him the messenger and Allah knew that this is the best and the highest of creation. But still he went through so much difficulty. Let's take a look at more of what happened. When he had his children, subhanallah, may Allah bless us all with good offspring who will be the coolness of our eyes. I have come across people who lose children. As we speak, there is a cousin of mine whose wife fell down the stairs a few days ago with a baby who was one year old. That is a niece of mine, so to speak. And the niece is critical in ICU. How to look at this? Is it a punishment? Not necessarily. In fact, no, it's an opportunity to do what? To understand the plan of Allah. That is Allah and to get closeness to him and to prepare for the day, we're going to go back to him. That's what it is. It's a call for me to look at something and to tell myself, you know what? Let me understand that life is very short. People lost their lives. I can lose mine, but I need to lead my life in a way that when I meet with Allah, I'm a person who does not regret what I did in the past. That's it. So. If something that the world calls a tragedy brings you closer to your maker, it was a gift for you, subhanallah. Meaning it was a reminder for you. It was something that came to you that improved you as an individual. There are people who oppress their wives, they oppress their children, they speak badly with those who work for them, they steal and cheat, they do things that are wrong. When sometimes a tragedy occurs in their lives to someone else, it wakes them up in a way that they stop cheating, they stop stealing, they speak kindly. They become people who are very, for example, uh, soft hearted after they were hard hearted and so on. So what was that? That was, a, that was in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reminder for us. We may never understand why Allah does certain things. That is because La yus'alu amma yaf'alu wa hum yus'alu. We do not have the right to question him, but he has the right to question us. He is the maker. You know, he has made, he has gifted us so much that when he takes us away, he always leaves behind the reason why we went so that we don't blame him. Subhanallah. He's, there is always a reason. This man died because of cancer. May Allah grant cure to those who are struggling with cancer. This man died because he had a heart attack. This man died because of a car crash. May Allah grant us all goodness. This man died because someone killed him. This man died because of this. There is always a because, right? But if Allah wanted, there would not have been a because. But in order for us not to insult Allah and for us to understand that you have to go and for us to know that it's part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he leaves a reason. And this is why my brothers and sisters, if you look at age, when you calculate age, the minute you say someone is one year old, you must understand that that means they're going to die at one stage. Why do I say this? Because you are counting. If they were not going to die, you would not count. When I say I'm in grade one, it means one day I will graduate from university if I have life. Because next year I will be in grade two. 
and that means I'm one year closer to graduation or I spent one year more at school. The fact that I'm counting means it's limited. That is the gift of Allah for us to understand. Anything you count has a boundary. What you do not count has no boundary. That's why when we go into Jannah, may Allah grant us all paradise. I mean, and may Allah grant us paradise without reckoning because we have deeds we are not proud of. When he takes accounts, we are, we, Wallahi, it's going to be so difficult for us to give account of everything we've done. So we rather pray that, Ya Allah, take us to paradise without reckoning. Your mercy alone. And we believe in that mercy. May Allah grant us the mercy. So when we get into paradise, one thing unique that will happen is that time. Time shall be brought in the form of a small animal and it shall be slaughtered. Gone. So from today or from that day, should I say, no more counting. There's no time. Why? Because now there is eternity. So we stop counting. The question does not arise. How long were you here? Because I'm in paradise. There's no question. How long am I here? So going back to what I was saying, the fact that you are one year old, two years old, there will be a time when you will be 70 years old. If Allah has given you the life, then what do you want? Well, with us, man is such that no matter how old he is, he still wants to live longer and he still wants to carry on. And even if he is 90 years old, he says, make dua Allah gives me good health and long life. MashaAllah, that is good. But it's the way Allah has created us. This mind that I have believes that you know what? I have a time to spend in this world. And because it is a human mind, I sometimes will not understand unless I have belief why Allah takes us away. If I have belief, then I understand Allah takes us away because we were never created solely to live in this world. But this world, we came to pass a phase and a stage and we were going to go out anyway. From the very beginning, I was dipped into this college or school known as the dunya or this life. And I need to graduate from the tests Allah places in my life. Every year I will face two, three, four, ten, twenty tests depending on what Allah wants for me. And I have to pass them one after the other, collect a certificate of graduation into the next year. The following year I might have more difficult tests and the following year I will have more difficult tests until I die with a certificate that will grant me graduation into paradise. Just like when you get to school, grade one has an easy test. Grade seven has a difficult test. Form one and two, if you are operating on the British system, you have form four, for example, it has the O levels, quite difficult compared to grade seven. And if you have the A levels, it's even higher. Then you get the certificate, you graduate into university. And when you are finished all your studies, you have a huge degree. And that is when you graduate into the world where you will get a job based on how well you have done back at school. If you did not do well, what type of a job would you like? So the same applies. We are just in the school. We have come grade one, two, three. We will go up to about 70 in some case, some cases in perhaps some less, some more, a little bit more. And then we graduate into the grave and into the hereafter to Allah. And we take with us a certificate and Allah gives us based on the certification we have, based on the certificate we have, He gives us something. So we get now paradise. But like you know, not everyone who is wealthy has a good qualification at school. Have you seen that? Sometimes the richest of people, they, they have hardly been through grade seven and they've got a lot of wealth. So the same way, the mercy of Allah is such that even if we haven't done too well in this world, sometimes He can just give it to us. If we have a good heart, if we understand, we try to develop a link with Allah, some good deeds He may love from us that will actually grant us paradise. One of these deeds is, to endure when He inflicts you with something. Endurance. Don't question Allah, but turn to Him. Ask Him to have mercy. Ask Him to bless those who are affected. Ask Him to bless us all. Reach out to those who are in their time of tragedy. Speak good words to them. Reach out to them. That is the teaching that we have been taught by Muhammad So we start off by saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That's the first statement you say when some news of a tragedy comes to you. What does it mean? It means we belong to Allah and ultimately we are all going to return to Him anyway. That's what it means. But it's a prayer to say, 
that let's understand the plan of Allah. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. If someone tells you, you know what, something disastrous has just happened. First thing you say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Which means we are Allah's. We belong to Allah. We will return to Him. So Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was blessed with a child. Subhanallah, a boy, and he had a few boys. They passed away, all of them, in childhood or infancy, without exception. Now, we've heard people when someone dies in the home, they say Allah is punishing them. Astaghfirullah, wake up, say statements that are responsible. Don't just call, you know, speak and say things that you don't even have knowledge regarding. So it's important for us to know if that was the case, Muhammad ﷺ lost one child and another and another. So much so that something extremely important for us to make mention of. Do you know that Muhammad ﷺ lost every single child of his, including the females, whilst he was alive besides one? And that was Fatima binti Muhammad radiallahu anha who passed away just after Muhammad passed away. So if you were to ask anyone that the best of creation, did he go through any struggles? He went through the most, whatever you can think of, it, it's already happened. News came to him of the, the death of his companions. News, news came to him of how they were attacked in certain cases. He was faced with armies who came to him to attack him. Is it ever recorded in the books of Islam that that was a punishment against Muhammad sallallahu No. Look at his companions. They struggled in a very big way. They struggled in a huge way. They were persecuted solely because they said we are Muslim. It happens today. You, why? Your Iman is being tested. Alif Lam. Allah <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah says, Alif Lam Mim. Do people think that it is enough and sufficient for them to say we believe and then they will not be tested about that? Indeed, we will test them like we have tested those before them. And indeed, we have tested those before them in order to distinguish who really believes and who does not believe. This is what Allah says. We will, we will test you. And the Quran says, وَلَنَبْنُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ We will definitely test every single one of you with a little bit of fear, with some hunger, and some loss of produce, loss of life. Lack of profit, you lose something. We will test all of you with the minus sign, not only with the plus sign. In order for you to be patient, Allah says, give good news to those who have sabr. You know what is sabr? Endurance, patience. To bear patience, to restrain yourself is also a part of sabr. Be careful. Allah has promised He will test you with the minus sign. And I call upon you to understand what that means. It does not mean that you only tested with the plus sign. If I am to test you mathematics, when you are a baby, I might teach you or ask you what is one plus one. But when you are an adult, I need to ask you what is one divided by one? What is five minus three? What is five minus ten? Then you need to give me an answer to say minus five. So Allah does not test you only by giving you. When He gives you a lot, it's also a test of Allah. Don't think that, you know what, it's just a happy moment where we must enjoy ourselves and forget why we are here and the fact that we are going. No, He has best blessed you with so much. He is testing you. What do you do with that so much? If it makes you arrogant and haughty and it makes you a person who thinks that you are it, you become proud, you want to oppress people, you want to just 
claim authority and start dishing out instructions as though you are the big boss, you are losing it. You are losing it. Why? Because you were placed in a position of authority in order to lead a responsible life, in order to understand Allah's plan. You were given wealth in order for you to be able to spend it correctly. So you earn it correctly, spend it correctly. When you have, you have, you have. Addition, addition, addition. All good things are happening to you. It is not a sign of the pleasure of Allah, nor is it the sign of the displeasure of Allah, but it is a test from Allah to see what do you now do with what we've given you. We gave you a share. We gave you millions of ringgits, for example, or rands or dollars, whatever you'd like to say. What did you do with them? How did it make you? Did it keep you humble? Did you understand? Like the Sahaba, the companions of Muhammad ﷺ understood when they were multi-millionaires. Look at Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu. He passes away leaving behind millions of gold coins. But he was such a simple man. He did not miss a salah. He never spoke to people disrespectfully. He served the community and the people and the nation. It's something amazing. This is Allah's test for them. But there will come a time when you have to be tested with the minus sign, my brothers and sisters. If you are a businessman, there was a day and there will be days when you will be tested with a loss. Something goes not according to your plan. So don't say I'm being punished. Reflect over your condition and say, this is Allah testing me now. What do I do when something has happened not according to what I like? Sometimes it happens once, twice, thrice, and we still turn to Allah closely. We become closer and closer to Him. And we say, Oh Allah, we belong to you. Take a look at Muhammad ﷺ. Not one loss, one, two, three, so many losses. His children, his daughters passed away after they were married. Ruqayya binti Rasulullah ﷺ passed away. And thereafter, Umm Kulthum after some time also passed away. And they passed away one after the other. Subhanallah. That was a test, minus sign. The one who was given the most comprehensive test is the one whom Allah loves the most because he has the highest qualification. So the hadith confirms this and it says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves a worshipper, he tests him much more than the ordinary person. So much so that the companions of Rasulullah when they were not tested, they were worried. They were asking for the pleasure of Allah. Ya Allah, we hope you are happy with us. Subhanallah. When they are tested, they are made to endure. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was tested, he knew that Subhanallah, this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember this, my brothers and sisters, in life, we will be tested with the minus sign. Sometimes we suffer loss. Sometimes we suffer death. Sometimes we suffer so many things. It is for us to learn a lesson. As for those who have gone, they have gone. Had they not gone in that way, they would have gone in another way because their time was up. I come with the time. You come with the tag. Best before is written on food. But for us, expiry. Allahu Akbar. We don't like to believe that. But subhanallah, there is an expiry date. When is your date? Well, you need to check now and again, making sure that you are not caught unaware. Caught unaware meaning I go and I don't even realize that you know what? I haven't prepared for the day. I'm going. So I have a beautiful car and a house and a family and clothing and perfume and watches and, and apparatus and phones and, and everything else is excellent and beautiful and I look so good. But I never ever thought oh, that let me prepare for the day when all these looks will mean nothing because I'm going to be in my grave anyway. So that is the expiry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Those who are gone are gone. Those who remain are either directly or indirectly connected to what just happened. Take a look at this. Aircraft. Those who are gone are gone. May Allah give those Jannah and may Allah grant them paradise. Those from amongst them, they have had, if they have had Iman in their hearts, Allah will look at them with mercy. But to be honest with you, for us to start saying this is a punishment and, not, and this is this and that, we are assuming the role of Allah. And that is an insult to Allah. We should not say this. Secondly, those who are related to those who have lost their lives in such a tragedy, it's for us to reach out to them and comfort them no matter what, Muslim or non-Muslim. It's your duty 
It's your duty to reach out to them. They are human beings. They have feelings. They have a heart. Perhaps if you reach out to them positively and express your condolences and sympathies and show that you are standing together with them in this tragedy of theirs, it will soften their hearts even towards Islam as such, where today Muslims are being looked at as the worst people on earth for some strange reason. Yet Islam is the best and purest way of life ever. Now in order to reach out to people, whilst the calamity of this nature happens, people say, look, I'm only dua for the Muslimin. As for the non-Muslims, they can go to hell. Astaghfirullah. This is a statement that people utter. But you as a human being, the bare minimum, perhaps you might be restricted in exactly what dua to make for them by the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad Wasallam. But to express your condolences and sympathies is something that every human needs to do. What's wrong if I go and I say, my brother, I feel your pain. I share your pain. If there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. You are a human being. Some of them are really close to us. They've served us. Some might have worked for us. So many different things. They've lost their lives. Go to the family. Send a message to them. Tell them, you know what? I, I share your pain. I stand with you today. I sympathize with you. I express my deepest and sincerest condolences. Subhanallah. This is a Muslim. This is what you should be doing. Don't be lost and fooled by those who say, you know what, because they are not Muslim, you've got nothing to do with those. How dare you? How dare you? You think that is the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Not at all. No ways. He reached out to those who harmed him, let alone those who were non-believers who were, you know. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protect us. There was a woman who used to throw dirt on him every day. One day she was sick. He went in to ask about her. He prayed for her good health. We pray for the good health even of the non-Muslims and the Muslimin. There's no restriction on that. You ask Allah to grant them good health. They are sick. They are ill. Perhaps their hearts will be softened towards the goodness that you have brought. So she accepted Islam based on the fact that Muhammad Wasallam went to inquire about her health. Yet she was an enemy of his. Wow. It's a long story. I don't wish to go into it. But the third thing we need to know. Those who are related, we've just said, we will reach out to them somehow. May Allah help us. Reach out positively. Be careful for negative words. Be careful of negative words. And the third category of people, those who are not connected to anyone, not at all. Some of us might not be connected. Well, I know in Malaysia, every single person is connected because it was our airline. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard this country. May Allah safeguard the airline. May Allah safeguard us. Completely. May He make us appreciate the gift of goodness we are in. Never ever undermine the security of your land. It's one of the biggest gifts you have. Where, really. Work towards preserving what you have as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those sometimes who are not connected at all, the minimum for them is, it is a lesson. A lesson. They need to pray to Allah. Reach out in whatever way you can. You might not be connected to anyone, but you turn to Allah in prayer, in dua. You change your life. You ask Allah, Ya Allah, let me prepare for the day I'm going to meet you. I don't know how I am going to go. I fly often and no one would like to go in that way. But if that's the way Allah has chosen for you to go, you don't know. It's predestined. It's predestined. Actually, you something that happens before you and I were born, it's already written how you're going to go. That's up to Allah. So this is why we as Muslims call it a test. And I want to end by telling you one thing very important. A believer and a non-believer, one who believes and one who does not believe, would look at a calamity very differently. Very, very differently. Yesterday I was reading some of the tweets of some of the people and I could pick up this person doesn't believe. And this person is a believer. People are swearing Allah. How can you do that? That's the worst thing you could ever do. As it is, you have one calamity. You're closing the door by adding your own calamities. You don't swear Allah. A believer looks at it in a different way. We call it a test. And we call it a great test. When we say a great test, what do we mean? We don't mean we are happy with this or that. No, we mean it is something Allah has chosen for us to endure. We would go through it. And we ask Allah's help to say, Oh Allah, you have decisions that you make, nobody can override. You override our plans. You know, we are taught, we plan, Allah plans. And the ultimate is what Allah will plan. So I don't have a choice sometimes, I can try my best. But that's where it stops. Try your best. But what happens, the, the rest of it is in the hands of Allah. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. I thought I would share these few words with us in order to, to highlight how a Muslim should look at this type of tragedy and calamity, seeing that today we have just heard the news of this devastating tragedy of Malaysian Airlines flight number MH17. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this nation. May Allah protect you all and us. And may Allah grant you ease. And really we reach out in prayer to those who have lost their lives and to their families and to the nation and to all the nations. There are different nationalities. All of them are human beings, our brethren in humanity. And we reach out to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.